God bless. Pray everybody had a great day. Beautiful weather outside. Amen. I stayed outside all day working in the yard, doing things. Praise God. Amen. Just was glad to be in the house, um, just being out there in God's nature. Uh, spent time outside. Praise God. Came in, uh, showered, and have all intentions of going back out in a very little bit and, and do some more tinkering. God bless you. Sister Robin, bless you, Janae. Praise God. Bless you. God bless you, Sister T. Amen. We ready to get started. Amen. I'm excited about the lesson today. Amen. Let a few more come on. Praise God. I pray you've enjoyed the weather. Amen. Find yourself. Amen. That meditation time I talked about, this is a great time to find yourself outside sitting somewhere it's not so hot, not a lot of bugs. So get that, get that meditation time in. Amen. God bless you, Sister Margaret. Amen. God bless you. Praise God. Amen. So get that meditation. God bless you, Sister Mays. Thank you for being with us. Amen. So get that meditation time in. Find that time with the Lord. This is opportunity for us to get it strong. God bless you, Sister Tyria. Amen. God bless you. Um, this is a time for all of us to get stronger in the Lord. Time alone gets get our, our, our um, relationship stronger. Amen. To where we can really focus on the Lord. So when we get back, amen, to back to church, God bless you, Missionary Tucker. So when we get back to the house of God, we'll be prepared to bless those that come in. We got to come back with a whole new mindset. God bless you, Sister Yafat. Amen. Begin to share it out to those, amen, as you're coming on. Amen. We got to come back with a new mindset. So we got to be very focused. Mind you, I pray that you know that because we are not assembling, that it's important that we are being um, getting stronger. Um, I pray that we're just not spending a lot of time. I'm glad we're spending time here together. But amen. I want you to pick that word up for yourself. Praise God. Amen. God bless you, Sister Patty, for coming on. Praise God. Uh, I want you to spend that time, amen, that word. Because it's critical, praise God, that you don't, you know, you know, some of us don't pick our word up on a daily basis. But I'm encouraging us, amen, to change that habit a little bit, amen, to find ourselves spending some time with God, amen. As we're spending time here, praise God, as I give these scriptures, write them down, go back, amen, and review them later, praise God, um, at your leisure, praise God, and amen, grab your Bible, amen, as you know, we're going to go to a scripture now, amen. God bless you, Sister Darlene. Amen. We're on our 15th day. Praise God. Amen. Feeling strong. God bless you, Sister Vonda. Begin to share it out to other saints of God. Um, the 15th day. Amen. We're on the 15th day of, of Daniel fast. We're, we're in a series of promises. Amen. I'm excited. Amen. Because look, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm learning too. Amen. Every time I get some new word, amen, encourage you. Maybe I've heard it before, but it just leaps in my spirit even deeper, knowing that God cares, amen, that these promises wrap around my life, amen. It helps me to be encouraged, amen, that when things and opposition and situations come, amen, even like what's going on now, it lets me know no matter how difficult it looks still, I yet praise God, amen, have God on my side, amen, and have the ability to win, amen. So, Amen. It's important that we spend that kind of time. God bless you, Sister Monica, being on with us. Amen. So share it out with others. So on the 15th day, I pray that, praise God, each one of you have been, amen, faithful to the Daniel fast. I know it's a little different. Amen. I told one of the uh, missionaries of the church, and she was talking about pastor. She called me and said, you know, it's a little different. Praise God, pastor. I want to drink that Pepsi. And I said to the sister, I said, I'll tell you what, you, if I hear, I'm going to ask you a point blank. If you drink that Pepsi, you're going to have to do uh, one of these promises. Amen. So I, I, I asked her the other day, has she drunk that Pepsi? She said, uh-uh. Amen. I want to encourage her to stick the course. Amen. It's important that we stick the course. Even if you fell off, wipe yourself off and get back up. Amen. So we're living on the promises. And our promise today, praise God, is going to be found in Psalms 139, 1 through 4. Praise God. And it says, um, God knows you intimately. And that's absolutely true. But also, I want to say God formed you with intentions. I want to add that in, amen, as I was studying, praise God, as a, you know, that just leaped in my spirit, that not only did God know you intimately, he formed you intentionally. He, informed, he, he formed you, praise God. God bless you, brother, uh, Parsley, amen, Jesse, amen. God bless you. He was a soldier in the military with me 30-something years ago. Good to see you on, praise God. 
Amen. Good to see him joining us today. Praise God. Haven't seen him in a long time. Good to see him there. Praise God. Share with others. So not only did God um, know you intention, um, know you intimately, he formed you intentionally. You got to know, praise God, that the way you're made, God intentionally made you. And some of you, praise God, need to know that. And hopefully before the end of this lesson today, you'll be able to understand this promise. Amen. And begin to live the 100%. Remember last night, amen, we know that God saved us and we know that we have a heaven to go to. But in between there, amen, we're going to live a good life. I'm going to live 100%. Anybody, anybody agree with me, praise God, that I'm not going to wait till I get to heaven to have all the things that God has promised me. I'm going to live a good, comfortable life of peace. Amen. Here on earth, I'm not going to always cry, struggle, and have all the difficulties. I'm going to have some things that God's just going to favor with me and cover me with. That's what the words say, and I'm deserving, and I'm determined to have what God said I can have. Amen. Anybody else with me? Somebody say amen to me out there. I need some people that really, really believe that's important. So, amen. Psalms 139, 1 through 4. Oh, Lord, you have searched me and know me. Listen, that's the first thing he says. You have searched me and know me. See, God searched him and know him. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. That's amazing, amen, that God knows, amen, your every move. God knows what you're going to do when you're going to do it, amen. I like this, praise God, because God knows every move you'll make. And, and I found that, amen, to be supportive even in Psalms 121, 7 and 7. It says, God knows every move. It says, the Lord will guide you from evil, from all evil. That's the seventh verse. He will preserve your soul. Now, the eighth verse says, the Lord will watch over you and you're going out and you're coming in forevermore. That means, praise God, God knows when you're going to do something. God knows when and how you're going to do it. He's an omnipotent God. He knows all things. Amen. He's in every place. So, amen. You've got to understand, first of all, this intimate relationship is that God knows all about you. But at the end, I'm going to share something with you that's going to really blow some of your minds. And some of us don't realize that God knows that much about us. Some of think, well, who am I for God to be that concerned with us? That's how God is. He loves us individually, and, 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 me, and we mean that much to him. You've got to know that. Come on. I, see, I don't see anybody agreeing with me on this. But you've got to know that for yourself, that you are somebody special in God's eyesight. No matter what anybody else say, God intentionally, come on somebody, intentionally made you and know you. He knows your ins and outs and your ups and downs. Amen. Goes on to say, praise God, still reading, praise God, amen, in 139, Psalms 139, 1 through 4. And you understand my thoughts from afar off. Amen. You search out my path and you lay in, in my line down. You are, you are aware of all my ways, even before a word is on, on my tongue. <laughs> now, that's good. Even before you formulate the thought of saying something, God already knows what you're going to say. <laughs> oh, my God. I wish that we knew what we were going to say sometime before we said it. Now, I need a real amen. Because, amen, once you put it out there, you cannot really back in. Somebody say amen to me. It is awesome that God knows what you're going to say. And amen. And not that God wants you to even make a mistake. But look, God gives us all the abilities and all the tools that we can uh, gate our mouths. But as he say, praise God, amen, amen. And James, that the tongue is, amen, we can still ship. Amen. With a very little, with a very little guidance, with a very little thing, but a tongue is hard to tame. Praise God. So we know that, Amen. What we say out of our mouths. I always say this, and it's kind of graphic. I'd rather for you do a lot of swallowing than spitting, because once you spit it out your mouth, it's out there. Praise God. Amen. You don't have to say everything. Somebody say Amen to me. But it says here, Praise God. God knows, Amen. Every word, but even before you formulate, even before it comes to your mouth. Amen. Even before you put it to your tongue, God knows what you're going to say. Amen. But I found something else, praise God, that also helps me. God also knows every prayer you need to pray. In Romans 8 and 26, it says, um, we don't even know what to pray. It tells us that, praise God, that, we, amen, that this when our spirit, that spirit is willing to help us when we are weak. And it says it even intercedes for us, praise God. And amen, because sometimes we don't know what we ought to pray. That's Romans 8 and 26 for those, amen. Sometimes we don't know exactly what to pray. What? You say, yeah, I know what's going on in my life. 
Yeah, you may know what's going on, but you really don't know what to pray. You're praying for things, amen, that may not be. Come on, can everybody agree with me? See, we don't know everything. We just see the surface of things. Somebody say amen to me. Come on. How many of you know, praise God, just because the car started, I mean, stopped running and stopped in the middle of the street, that's not always, that's, that's a sign of a problem. See, sometimes we're just trying to fix the signs. And, and not fixing the problems. See, that's a deeper surface sometimes, and we have to allow God. So sometimes we really don't know what to pray. We really don't know what it's going to take to really repair some things. How many of you, amen, ask for certain things from God in which you have never asked them? <laughs> is there anybody besides me that ever went to God with something, and this is what I needed, this is what I want, God is the only way out of it, this is the only way it can be fixed, there's no other way out of it, I can't fix it, no other way, I can't see any way else, I've seen everybody else do it this way, I know it's the way to fix it, and you begin to petition God for it, but you find out God never give it to you, but when he finally fixes it the way he says fix it, you're so glad Praise God that your prayer wasn't answered. Anybody else besides me can agree right there. You need to be able to agree. Come on, tell somebody that haven't had a prayer like that. There's somebody, praise God, that's on here that have don't understand what I'm just saying. There, you need to agree with me, praise God, that amen. Sometime, praise God, we don't know what to pray. Amen. We'll pray out of the will. Amen. So these things right here say he even knows our thoughts and our tongue. That's an intimate relationship. But let's go a little further. I went on a little further in the same Psalms 139. And then in seven verses where I go to escape from your spirit, where I can flee from you in your presence. He said, whatever, well, if I go into the heavens, you there. If I go into hell, you are there. He said, no matter where I go, God, you, have, you are so intimate with me. That is absolutely not a place I can escape that you're not there. You're everywhere, God, that I can be. This is the kind of God we serve, amen. I need somebody to really understand that. He says, praise God, if I rise up with wings, amen, amen, and fly away, and if I, amen, go to the farthest sea, you are still there with me, amen. Jeremiah 23 and 23 said, God is always where you are. He's always where you are. When you become a child of God, God loves you just like that. He is where you are, praise God, in the midst of your situation. We realize that, praise God, that when Daniel was in the lion's den, we realize that when the three Hebrew boys was put into the fiery furnace, God showed, Jesus showed up and walked around in them. It said that Nebuchadnezzar looked in there as a whole. I thought we threw three in there, but I see four. Amen. Because, amen, Jesus is with you. Now, sometimes you may not feel him, but he's still there with you. Somebody help me out. Somebody say amen to me, praise God. Amen. I love it, praise God. He knows what I'm going to do. He knows when I'm going to do it. He knows the number of hairs on my head. You know, I was laughing out there, praise God, because it's getting a little thin up there. Somebody, I don't need no amen on that one. I know I'm going to get a couple of them because I know somebody even told me I'm getting a little thin up there. So I know, praise God, even he knows the number of hairs. And I was saying, well, somebody's getting a little thinner. I guess he realized, praise God, so well, God, you know, you subtracted some more. You know me just like that. You may have known the many I had when I was born and many I've had when I had the fullest head I had. And now you know how many I got right now. Come on, someone. That's the kind of God we serve. He knows us. He wants that kind of intimate relationship with us the way we can always draw to him. He's already drawn to us. Somebody help me out in this, praise God. Amen. And it says, praise God, he's always near. I am God who is near. I'm always near for you. Jeremiah 23 and 23 said, I am never far from you. Amen. My relationship with you, once you give your life to Christ, is to be close to you. Mind you, let me explain something to you. The reason why he sent Jesus so you can get back close to him. Come on. He wants us to have the Adam, the Adam relationship again. He wants us to have that kind of relationship to where we can walk in the cool of the day with him in the presence. Amen. Oh, see, y'all don't like that. You didn't even understand what I meant. See, he may not come down, but we can have that presence with him, that relationship that we can feel his presence in the midst of the day. Amen. Even when you're outside in the yard, no matter where you are, you can feel God's presence with you. Somebody help me out. Amen. When you're in the midst of your darkest clouds, he's still with you, praise God. How many of you with? Amen. I want you want that peace to pass understanding. That's the kind of relationship God is talking about having. You know that peace comes from not that things completely changes, it's knowing that God's got his hands on the change. Woo! <laughs> 
That sounds so good to me, praise God, and blow my old mind. See, it's not that things changes around. That peace means that God's got his hand on the change. He's going to change the situation. He's going to handle it, praise God. And that gives you the peace that passes all understanding. That's why Jesus in that boat, praise God, went in the back, went down in the bottom, went to sleep when it looked like it was going um, to uh, uh, sink. Because he knew that everything was going to be all right. Instead of them waking him up, all of them should have got pullers and went down there and slept with him. Because wherever he was and how peaceful he is, praise God, that's where you should be. Oh, y'all didn't catch that. I'm going to move on because some of y'all didn't give me enough amens, praise God. Amen. I'm telling you, praise God, that's the kind of peace we can have to pass understanding. Situations don't have to change. I keep telling you, praise God, listen to this once again. It's not what you see. It's what God say. What his words say that matters the most. Not what we see, not what we're going through, not what we feel, and what God says. And whatever his words say is more powerful than anything you could ever see or ever, praise God, think. Somebody give me an amen in here. Y'all not trying to work with me tonight. I know a lot of you, praise God, is enjoying the day, but some of you need to work with me right now. Amen. So Joshua 1 and 9 tells us that. He tells Joshua, and this is a lo I love this one so much. It said, be in good courage. Be strong and be encouraged. Do not be tremble. Do not be afraid. He said, for the Lord God is with you wherever you go. Now, mind you, praise God. Man, I'm going to say this, and this is going to help some of you. You got to understand you can't go anywhere you want to go. You got to go where God will lead you. You can't be in every piece of mess and expect God to show up. I remember a long time ago, been years ago, it was a bumper sticker that said, God is, um, it used to be God is my co-pilot. And then somebody else came up with one and said, God, God may be your co-pilot, but after 65 miles an hour, he gets out. See, in other words, praise God, you can't expect God to take care of you when you are just, con can expect God to cover you sometime when you just intentionally come constantly doing wrong. You can't go everywhere and expect God to just all of a sudden shout down his blessings. That's why he give you warning and what to do and who to be around, praise God. That's why you got to be careful who your friends are, who you're talking to on the phone, who you're spending all your quality time with, because whatever you pouring into you, that's what's going to come out of you more. Can I get an amen? It, you don't have everybody in your ear. All right, look, it's in, you done dried up because pastor done got to talking to you hard. Y'all don't want to hear me tell the truth to you today, do you? Y'all thinking you're feeling like you're back at church. <laughs> Y'all want me to tell you you're going to prosper and God got this intimate relationship? Yeah, he does, but you've got to live a life that he can have it. Come on, somebody. Is that all right? I, I, how about this? Now, this will blow your mind. Most of you wouldn't go many places with me in your car. If, if I got your car, some of the... <laughs> Some of the places you expect God to show up in, you won't drive with me there. I'm going to turn around and look out the window and tell some of you give me an amen. Some of you not going to do some things, go some places, and say some things around me because I'm your pastor or I'm a man of God. You won't say it. But I'm just a man. But you go everywhere with God. <laughs> do that make sense, says of God? You got to understand your trial with God is much further than anything with me. So you got to understand one thing, praise God. God goes where we are. Amen. It goes on, praise God, in this, and I love it so much. Amen. Now here, look at this. I'm going to move a little further, praise God. And it says in the 10th verse, and I'm still in 139, praise God. I stayed in 139, Psalms 139. And then in the 10th verse, it says, even your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold my fast. And then I remember, praise God, in Psalms 23, said, the Lord is my shepherd. He will guide us. And I shall not want, amen. He leaded me beside the still water. He led me in the, uh, uh, he said, he, he made me lie in the path, um, in, in the, lay, lay me down in the green pastures. He said, leading me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leaded me in the path of righteousness for his name. God will lead you, praise God. If you allow him, amen, to have his way in you and with you, God will lead you, praise God. And it go, this goes on and on and on. But I'm going to skip down here, praise God, to what I like the most here. 13th verse. Let's go to the 13th verse, 139 and 13. Psalms 139, praise God. Psalms 139. Amen. I love this. I love this. This is going to be a blessing to some of you. 139, verse 13. Praise God. 139, verse 13. Amen. 139, verse 13. And it says, praise God, for you formed me in the innermost being. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. 
Can I help some of you out? This means that you, your existence is not a mistake. I don't care what nobody say. It bothers me when I hear somebody say, I didn't intend, we didn't intend to have no child. No, but it was God's perfect will. Don't you ever let anybody ever tell you, praise God, I don't care how many times your mother said, we wasn't expecting you or you wouldn't, you know, whatever, you know, we've heard a whole lot of nightmares, but you are not a mistake. You was made in existence. You're not a mistake. You was, God meant to make you. God intentionally looking at, and then the 14th verse, and it says, I'll praise you for that, God. I'll praise you because you knitted me together in my mother's womb. You formed me in the innermost being. You knew how you were going to make me. You knew what you were going to do with me. You blessed me in this way, praise God. But then it goes on and says that, and this is what I love, praise God, in the 14th verse, that I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Now, see, that should leap some of you right into your spirit. Yeah, I need an amen out of a few of you right there, praise God, because the problem is the whole lot of things on TV, if you look at TV, it doesn't think that makes you think that you're fearful and wonderfully made. I need some people in here right now to blow this up, amen, and say, I am wonderfully made. You got to know this. It says that I am wonderfully made, fearfully made. I wasn't just made by no any mistake. Fearfully and wonderfully made. I am. You got to say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. No matter what nobody else say, no matter what else they're trying to use as a scale, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And listen to this. God created you intentionally. He intentionally made you. He made you fearfully and wonderfully. Come on, someone. You are somebody, whether you like it or not, you just got to walk in it. This is where you got to have the confidence. Amen. I, I, amen. I'm going to talk about, amen, this is movie, praise God, a little cute movie. The girl was kind of a heavy-sized woman, and she bumped her head. And then, you know, first her self-esteem was towed up. But once she bumped her head, she thought she was the prettiest movie star that ever was. And she walked around with that confidence, amen, still a real size, but because she had the bump on her head, she seen herself a whole different way. She carried herself differently. And when she carried herself differently, People respected her differently. See, you got to understand, you got to believe yourself that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. God made you perfect. God made you in his intent. Don't let anybody fool you, praise God, just because you're not made like them or you're just not as cute as society say you got to be. There, you are wonderfully made. Come on, someone. And you got to have the confidence in there, praise God. Amen. You you remember that time I was uh, I preached a message a long time ago, get your swag on? You got to have that kind of confidence that you can walk around, pop your collar, know that God made you who you are, and you are what God has assigned you to be, and nobody can take that from you. It, 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 look, Somebody, you know, you got to be able to say it like this, that's their loss, not yours. Amen. Not everybody going to accept you, but come on. I didn't see enough of y'all not with me already. Somebody needs to say it's their loss, amen, that they didn't accept me. It's their loss that they didn't, they rejected me because I am fearfully and wonderfully made, amen. I'm not what everybody else is. I am made in God's image and God has blessed me. But look at this. Now, here is the one that will flow you all the way down. He said, listen to this. After you said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made, he says, marvelous is your work. And I know this is very well. <laughs> he said, not only praise God, my fearfully and wonderfully made, I looked in the mirror and realized that's marvelous. <laughs> Come on, y'all. I need some help in here. Look in the mirror and say, marvelously are your work. You work this thing just right, God. I looked in the mirror and said, marvelous. That's what it says. Marvelous are your work. Amen. You got to say it to yourself. Have confidence to know that God's made you perfectly in his image. Stop letting your self-esteem issues and the devil tell you you're not. Stop letting people tell you you're not. Stop letting things somebody said to you when you was 10, 15, or what everybody else said to other children in school, or what anybody, some boy said or some girl said to you of rejection, that means anything. The Bible says that you marvelously is your work. Fearfully and wonderfully made. And it says, and I know this very well. 
Praise God. So you got to have that kind of confidence. Amen. Now, what did I tell you today? Praise God. What was my whole purpose? Amen. As I'm trying to close out, I'm trying not to go over. I be trying my best not to go over. I be practicing this thing at night. Amen. And I practice again before I come on. So I try not to go over that half an hour because I need you to know that you're I'm fearfully and wonderfully made and marvelous is his work. Some of you, look, that's not being arrogant. That's just knowing confidence that God has made you well. God did it. And it is God. Look, the, the, he did it on the sixth day and every day he worked. He said, and it's good. Amen. So you got to know that he don't make no mess. <laughs> How many you know what I'm talking about? You remember when I, I preached the message, God doesn't work with average. God doesn't deal with average things. So amen. We have to live this thing as we know God has. Now remember, our whole objective of tonight, praise God, was God formed you intentionally and know you intimately. Now, now, now let me tell you this, saints of God. Here is the problem we have. Listen to me closely. God knows us that way. The problem is we don't know God that way. Uh-uh, let me say that again. God knows us in an intimate way. God knows every thought. He knows the intentions of our heart. He knows when we're going to go, come. He knows we're going to stand up, sit down, knows the words before we formulate it on our tongue. He knows everything about us. But the problem being, we don't know him as well enough to really recognize him when he's wrapping around blessing us. So remember what I told you. There was three things. It goes back to those three things. Reading your word. Amen. Understanding your God. Secondly, praise God. The second thing, praise God. I wish I could make y'all do it like in Bible study. Amen. What was the second thing? Somebody text it out there real quick before I say it. All right. The first one, reading your word. Praise God. That was, amen, our ability to know him. The suck, the, what was Amen. Oh, okay. Well, somebody, all right. Brother Bill talking about perfectly made. Amen. But no mistakes. Praise God. But the second thing was prayer. Pray. Amen. That was our ability. Praise God. Amen. For God. Amen. To, to talk to God, to have that relationship with him, to let him know what we're thinking and how we're thinking. Praise God. So, amen. There you go, Sister Margaret. Spend time in prayer. And what was the third one? Somebody help me out on the third one. Praise God. Please help me out on the third one. First one, reading your word. Second one, praise God, was amen, having a good prayer life. And what was the last one, praise God? Letting God download to you. That time of quietness, that time of intimacy, that time you still away. Amen. Just thinking about the goodness of him. Amen. I used to say going to the Garden of Eden. Amen. Because that was a place of peace. Nothing could harm you. Praise God. Amen. Just sitting on your deck, sitting somewhere where there's no struggles. Praise God. And you can get to a place where you can spend time with God. Then you begin to get this relationship, praise God, that I'm talking about. Because he already knows you like that. He knows you. He, form, he knows you. Intimately, he knows you. And God wants you to know him intimately. And with that kind of relationship, praise God, you can go anywhere and do anything because God is with you. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise wherever you are. Praise God. I am so glad God knows me like that. He cares that much about me. He made me perfectly. Praise God. Wonderfully made me. Praise God. Amen. Marvelous was your work. Amen. Come on, someone. And I am determined, praise God, from this day forward to walk in that promises. And whether, amen, come on, come on, talk to me. Come on, I pray to God some of you receive this. Whether, amen, the, somebody broke my heart that's behind me. I am wonderfully made and I'm going to be start walking in the confidence that God has made me in. I'm not going to look behind me anymore because I'm made in God's image with perfect will of God. Is that all right? Let us go before the Lord in prayer. We got two minutes, amen, before it's time to go. We always pray for our, our workers out there, praise God, our frontline workers, those people that are out there, amen, they're, they're out there in the midst of this virus, amen, the, those are first responders, amen, those nurses and doctors, amen, those people, praise God, the grocery store, amen. We need to pray for them, amen, because they're doing it. I know, praise God, we need them, amen. We also pray for those that may be struck with the, the virus. We pray for the elderly, amen. Amen, that may be nervous about the virus. Then we pray for our own self and we cover ourselves. Amen. But first of all, I want to pray, praise God, that you realize that you are intentionally made and you're marvelously. Amen. I want you to pray that. I want somebody to really have this down in their spirit. Is that all right? I want you to know this for yourself, praise God, that you are marvelously put together. No matter what nobody else judge you at, God took his time, praise God. He don't mess with average. God doesn't deal with average. I preached that thing. I preached it until everybody in the house knew what I was talking about. 
God doesn't deal with average. And if he made you, you not average. Somebody give me an amen out there. You can see some people down try to make you feel average, but that don't mean you average. You got to start looking to the hills. You are more than average. You're going to live 100 percent and living 100 percent. You can't live average. Somebody talk back to me. Y'all not trying to help me out. And I need some folks that really know what I'm talking about. I am determined to start living this thing according to his will. Amen. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I am so grateful, God, that now I know that you have a, such an intentional relationship, intimate relationship, knowing my ways, knowing my thoughts, knowing where I go and how I go, God, knowing who and what I'll say. But God, most of all, God, you made me perfect. You made me with perfect. You made me with fear. You made me, God, out of the greatness, Lord. You formed me. You knitted me, God. You made me just who I am, God. And I am gratefully, I'm wonderfully made, God. No matter what anybody else said, no matter if I got weight on me, whether I'm too skinny, whether somebody said, I, I don't care, God, but from this day forward, I know who I am. Nobody can judge me any other way. And I'm so grateful, God, that you took the time to bless me. Now, God, for every stronghold out there that have doubted who they are, have lost their confidence in their own self, feel like they're less than what they are. We speak against that today. We ask that you encourage every one of them, God, never to settle for less, God. Amen. 100% and 100% only, God. God doesn't deal with average and we shall not deal in average. So, God, we will not let our standards down for anything because, God, you don't give us to let our standards down. Help us, God. Come on, someone. Help me to have the strength to believe and the confidence to know that you made me perfectly, God. And I can expect 100% in all that I have. I can expect things to be according to your word. I don't have to let down in any way, God. I don't have to accept anything, God, because if you're with me, absolutely nothing can come against me. So, God, I decree this favor and blessings upon my life today in the name of Jesus. I speak that, God. I speak and I break every covering, every stronghold. I break every bit of depression upon it. I break every bit of self-esteem issue, I speak against it in the name of Jesus. Bless the people, God, right now that ever thought that they were not what you said they'd be. We speak against it, God, from whatever confidence level it came from, whatever devil in hell brought it into their mind, wherever it's from, I speak against it. No matter how many times we brought in their ears, I counsel it today that they'll start believing that they're wonderfully made and you are still somebody in your eyesight. Let them walk as if they're you are there, God. Let them walk, God, as if they know that you are who they are. God, let them walk, God, as they know that they're somebody. And God, is somebody will love them just the way they are. Bless them, God, every one of them, Lord. Help them stop to accept anything in their lives. Now, I'm wonderfully made, and nobody can do anything about it. In the name of Jesus, I claim it. Somebody claim it. And I refuse to go around believing I'm not anymore. I refuse to let the devil have that kind of room and that kind of authority in my life. Now, God, upon everyone that's out there on the front end of this thing, everyone, God, is a first responder, God. We got two of the fire, uh, uh, fire um, stations down because of the virus. We speak covering over them, God, because, God, in my house catch on fire. I need someone to come put it out. I need you, God, to cover them, God. Bless those first responders. Bless them, God, in the name of Jesus. Keep them, God, in the name of Jesus. Cover them, God. Now move upon, God, the hospitals. In the name of Jesus, give the doctors how to move upon the sick. Give them what to do, God. Give them how to do it. Give them the right diagnosis, the right medicine, the right tools, that they may bless everyone that walks in there, God. Let nobody go home that needs to be there, God. In the name of Jesus, help God not one of them be left out in the cold, God, and go home and die. Let nobody, God, be misdiagnosed. Let everyone, God, get the right treatment that is needed in the name of Jesus. We ask that you bless them, God. Everyone in the hospital that's suffering with it right now, we know you're a miracle worker, God. You can clear all of it up just like that if you desire so. But God, whatever you're doing in this season, I trust you, God. But most of all, God, let everyone in there, God, that may be going through this, know you for themselves. Give them a life of salvation. Give them a desire to serve you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We claim no matter what you're doing in this season, God, we trust you because we know you see it all. Your word say you see every bit of what's happening. We know you have your hands in the midst of all this. No matter what it looks like, God, you are going to be at the end of it. You're going to get glorified and the devil is going to be horrified. No matter how bad it looks today, it has nothing to do with the future promises of you. So we speak upon them, live upon them, and claim them, God, in the name of Jesus. Have your way with us, God. Bless each one of us, God, in a powerful way, Lord, as we give a go in through in and out, God.
God in our ways every day. Now, God, not only bless them, I ask you to bless the, the elderly, God, that's in the homes, Lord, those that are lonely, those that may not have the food. Help them, God, to get the food. Help some angel go by to check on them. Help them get a phone call, God. Give them comfort. Send an angel by, God, and just rest with them, God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, favor us, God. Keep us perfectly in your perfect will. Help us to be a light. Help us to seek you, God, even more. Now, God, I thank you, God, for knowing me like you do. I thank you, God, for intentionally, God, let me know I'm not a mistake. I'm glad to know, God, that you wonderfully made me. You knitted me just the way I am. I am so grateful for all this, God. I give you glory tonight, God, for just that, and I thank you, Lord. And I claim from this day forward, God, that no weapon formed against me to think that I'm less than what 100% is, um, that I'm less than anybody else. I refuse to allow it to happen anymore. I will continue to follow me, you no matter what. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Now, listen, says of God, very quickly. I know I went over tonight. We'll be at Miller Park tomorrow, 1 p.m., praise God. Drive up service. Drive up service. Come over to the park. We're going to be there at 1 p.m., praise God. Miller Park, drive up service, praise God. We're going to bless you, praise God. There, we're going to have a word. Amen. I'm praying about what we'll do on Easter Sunday. I know we'll have communion in the park. That's already set in my spirit. We will. That's for Easter Sunday morning and was Easter service. But we're also thinking about something for 6 p.m. So pray for me as I continue to seek the Lord for that. Amen. But listen, tomorrow, praise God, inviting each and every one of you at 1 p.m. drive up service, Miller Park here in Lynchburg, Virginia, 1 p.m., praise God. We will be live streaming that. Uh, uh, um, we'll be on Facebook Live, praise God, uh, at that time at 1 p.m. Eastern time. For those that like to be a part of that, watching us there. I love each one of you, praise God. Refuse to believe you're less than 100%. Refuse to believe that you're wonderfully made. No matter what anybody else ever said to you, build your confidence and know that you're wonderfully made and you're beautiful in the sight of God. And you got to have the confidence and know you're pretty. Amen. I, I ever one of y'all love, absolutely love each one of you. There's absolutely not a thing you can do about it. Be blessed.